Hello everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make your life easier with Moodle by using closed question quizzes to help enhance your class. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go through this presentation on the left here which is a uh, small presentation that talks about how to arrange the settings for a Moodle quiz and then we're actually going to walk through how to create some closed questions in that quiz uh, and I'll show you what's going on over here like actually typing it in as well as showing you some of the resources that we use in order to do that. Okay, So why Moodle? Learn how to create self-grading quizzes and assignments in NetSchool by using Moodle to make embedded closed questions. You can change any multiple choice, short answer, or numerical assignment into an online assignment. Uh, I use this in my class all the time. It's extremely helpful. So if you're in your Moodle course, you go and create a quiz. So I've just created a new quiz. I'm calling it Test Quiz 1. You can have a description if you'd like. Boogity. Doesn't really matter depending on what you're trying to do. You can display it or display it not on your page. All right. So over here, this presentation goes through all the things that I'm going through as well. So uh, how do you make your quiz settings? All right. First off is timing. Okay, depending on when you want the quiz to be available, you can enable a certain time for it to open, you can enable a certain time for it to close, you can give it a time limit, like if you only want them 20 seconds to work on the quiz. You can also determine what's going to happen when time expires. You can say, do I want the open attempts to be submitted automatically, so if someone's like half done, they get half the points, or do you want them to have to click it? That's up to you, it puts the responsibility on them. So on this one, I'm not going to put any opening or closing, I just want it to be available. All right, on the second section, that's your grade. Okay, your grade category is going to come up, and it looks like this. Um, generally, I don't ever mess with this because it only has one option anyway. Attempts allowed. You can have any attempts you want, unlimited, one, two, whatever. I'm going to change it to two. The grading method is depending on what you're trying to do in your class. You can do highest average, first attempt, or last attempt. Okay. Layout. Uh, on the layout, you can change the question order so that it's shown the way it was on this edit screen for your quiz, or you can shuffle all the questions randomly. I generally always choose shuffle randomly, but it depends on what you're doing. If you want it to be like a sequential thing, you'll need to do as order shown on the screen. Uh, I also recommend doing a new page every question, because that way the, it has to reload as they go from question to question, unless you want them to see something from one question with the other question. Okay. For question behavior, which is this guy right here, huh? for question behavior, um, if you want the questions to shuffle within, you can do this. But if you're not already pulling random questions, this allows you to shuffle the questions and randomize the order here. There's like three different places you can shuffle and randomize. I generally just choose yes on all of them, and like you always know it's going to be shuffled. Uh, here's how questions behave, and this one is pretty important. Okay, there's lots of different versions of this. So in adaptive mode, what happens is if they get it wrong, they get a penalty. And then that penalty, they still allow, are allowed to answer the question again, but they can't get full credit. So like it takes off a third of the point if they get it wrong the first time. And if they get it wrong the second time, then it takes off another third. Okay, that's how adaptive mode works. You can also do adaptive mode with no penalty and it'll just always be correct if they get it correct. So that's just kind of like a learning quiz versus the one you're actually going to want graded. Uh, deferred feedback is when you they answer the question but they don't know if it's right or not until the very end of the quiz. So they won't know until it's all over if it's correct or not. Uh, immediate feedback will immediately tell them if it's correct or not but it will not give them an option to change it or not. And then interactive with multiple tries is kind of a combination of some of the other ones. I, I really never use this one myself. So my recommendation is adaptive mode. It allows kids to have multiple chances, but also penalizes them if they don't get it right the first time. Uh, each attempt building on the last. So if you've got more than one attempt, like I have two attempts up here, let's say I'm doing a long assignment with like 15 math problems. If you say yes, each attempt will build on the last, that means all their answers from the previous time will be filled in. So if they only got two wrong, for example, if you were on deferred mode and they only find out they were wrong after the quiz is over and they had two of them wrong, they can go back on their second attempt and if each attempt builds on the last, all 15 problems will be filled in and then they can just change the two that they want to. Okay. So here is more examples or more uh, information about the different modes so you can check out the presentation here if you need to. Alright, review options. 
these are pretty straightforward. It just these are just show you when you want the kids to be able to see uh, what they did on there. Generally, if you want them to see what they did all together, you have to click on the attempt. Sometimes you may not want them to see while the quiz is like for an example later while the quiz is still open. Maybe you don't want them to see anything while the quiz is still open. You only want them to see after the quiz has been closed and everybody's taken it. So you could take this off so they can't see their or review their work then. They should always kind of be able to review it right after the attempt, but you can choose whatever thing you want when they can review. For display, never really touch the display. I pretty much always use it exactly the same as it is here. You can put extra restrictions on attempts if you want, like you can create a password so that way uh, only people with a password can take the quiz, like if it's a makeup quiz and you don't want just random people taking it. You can also force a delay between the first and second attempts. For example, if you had a kid take it and they fail and you want them to make sure they have remediation or tutoring before they take it again, you could put like a 24 hour delay on there. They can't take it until the next day. You could put like a 30 minute delay just making sure they study it again in class. For overall feedback, this can get pretty lengthy, but if you really want them to know specific things when they get things wrong, you can use this to show them. For example, you put a grade boundary of 70% in here and say, uh, with the grade boundary of 70%, you need to improve before taking the test. So that way they know they need to improve before taking the test. That seems pretty obvious if you're only going to do 70 or below, but you know, you can do whatever you want. Good job, we got 100. So this is how you do that. You can put in the boundary and put whatever feedback you want in there after that. Uh, for common module settings, you're gonna want it to be visible. You're gonna want the groups to be in separate groups. Now if you force group mode, which it tells you how to do that at the very beginning of this presentation, right here, it's in force group settings and under admin. You can always have it in separate groups and then you don't ever have to change that or not. But if you do, don't do have it for group settings, you just click separate groups here so you group uh, by classes. And then restricting access, you can restrict access during the quiz, like if I don't want quiz, uh, kids to uh, take it during spring break or something, you could do that here. And it tells you what's prevented. Okay, so those are all the settings. So I'm going to say save and display. Let me see that quiz. Bam! There's an empty quiz. Boogity! So test quiz one, but now there's no questions have been added. So now I want to edit the quiz and add some questions. Now if you've got a question bank like I do for my class, you can add any questions from your question bank. However, you can always add a new question. So like default for test quiz one, I'm going to add a question. So we're going to learn how to do closed questions. Now closed questions are really easy and this is test question one. So closed questions are really great because you can put three different kinds of formats, multiple choice, short answer, or numerical, and you can do as many of them as you want in a single field, and you can use any type of them together. So you don't have to only do multiple choice. You don't have to only do short answer like you do have to, like you're forced to on the other Moodle ones. You can do all of them at the same time. So the best way to uh, do this, number one, is use this resource, and I have these two resources listed at the bottom of here. Okay, the first is the instructions, and this is on uh, docs.moodle.org, and this just tells you all the instructions about how to do this. Okay, so also there is a later version if you're using something higher up than Moodle 2.2, but since we're using 2.0, I'm going to continue using these instructions. But essentially, you can go through here and it'll tell you all the different formats for creating these questions, okay? And they're pretty pretty straightforward. I mean, you can have some really easy questions, like right here, short answer is Berlin. So they can be very, very short, or they can be longer and give multiple percentages and then optional feedback like you give optional feedback using this guy so they can be very simple or they can be way more complex depending on what you're wanting so I'm just gonna do some really short versions of these so like for example let's say I want to know the short answer what color is the sky so then I'm gonna do that colon and it's the squiggly colon I'm gonna say one point for this question colon SA for short answer colon and the answer to this equals blue and then use the squiggly colon 
to close it out. Now, you can decode and verify the question text before being done with the question, and that will quickly tell you right below here, question one, short answer, default mark one, answer blue, grade one. If it does this with no red badness, then that means you have correctly input the code for a closed question. So there is a short answer closed question. Okay, let's try a multiple choice closed question. Two, how many fingers are on my right hand? And I have a normal human right hand. So, one point for this question, MC, showing that it is multiple choice, and then you say your answer choices. Now, your answer choices here are going to show up in the order that you put them. So, like, I wanted this to go in sequential order, so I'm going to say one, and then use a tilde to separate. Two, tilde. Three, tilde. Four, tilde. And then the correct answer needs to say equals five. Close it out. And once again, I'm going to decode just to check and make sure I did that correctly and didn't do it wrong. Question two, look at that. Works. The layout, drop down menu, inline in the text. The answer will be one will give you zero points, two will give you zero points, and if you say five, you will get a point. Let's try the third type real fast. The third type is, what do we do? Multiple choice? Numerical. Numerical. What is, or actually, let's do this. Answer the following math question. Five, that's a percent. Five plus three equals thingy. Actually, yeah, that works. So, then you do squiggly bracket again, one point for this question, and then NM is numerical, colon to separate, and so this one is going to equal 8. You can also put a colon here and give a variance, like I'm going to give a variance of 1, okay, and that's nice if you're using like fractions that have, or dividing where it's going to have like 6.5. 525, you can give a variance of like 0 0.05, so that way they have some leeway um, in there. So let's decode and verify the question text. Answer 3 numerical, the answer is going to be 8. Alright, so I'm going to save my changes. And that question has been added to the quiz. I can preview this question. Well, I know I can preview this question. Expand here by clicking this little. And then you have the preview for the question. You can fill in the correct responses and see if I got everything right there. Here's the radial drop down for the multiple choice, and it did mix these answers up for you. It'll mix these up for you right here when it's in a radial. But for example, if you change the question, you can use different multiple choice styles. Like I can do horizontal instead and if I save those changes and now we take a look at the question it's going to give me a horizontal menu in line already right there so depending on what you're wanting then that's going to be another way obviously it won't be able to shuffle these but it'll shuffle it when it's in the inline drop down menu so there you go that is how you create different types of closed questions. A second resource that's available here is the Moodle Close Editor. The Moodle Close Editor is a really nice tool where they create the question for you. So all you have to do is type in, and this tool, type in, like for example, if I have a short answer question and the answer is cheese. I just highlight cheese and I press this little gold question mark button here. And it gives me a pop-up that says, oh, this wants to be a short answer. Oh, the answer is cheese. I want this one to be correct, 100% correct. Insert, and it will automatically code it for you. This may look a little different from the code that we just created, because I did the simplest version. This is telling me 100% of the answer is cheese. If I filled in a second answer, like, uh, let's say, crackers here, and then did this. Like, people like to eat cheese with crackers, but not with cookies. And you say that is a 0% correct. Well, maybe 10% of people like to eat it with cookies. So now the short answer, they get 100% of the points if they answer crackers. They only get 10% of the points if they answer cookies. So this is a quick and easy way to get coding for these closed questions. So, recap. 
if you look at the presentation, you have all this information about how to make your life easier with Moodle. You have all the settings you need to create your quiz correctly. Here's examples of the three types of questions. Here's some examples of errors or troubleshooting that you may run into, but that walks you through that in the instructions. And those instructions are linked in this helpful resources area, as well as the editor, which will help you to create really fast and easy closed questions. Hope this was helpful, and take care.